Hello everyone, this is Derek from Boss Dragons. Thank you for tuning in. And this segment, we're gonna talk about the Nijmegen Rexpo that happened last Sunday. It was such an experience. It was a great environment where everybody had vibrational feeling, good feeling towards each other. It was no tensity. And that's what I'm trying to bring. Just unifying the passion, just sharing what we love with these animals. And that's what I want to unify and that's what I want to bring back. Let's jump into the segment and let's see all the crazy nice animals that I have seen in that show. Let's jump into it. What can we expect from Olympic Dragons? What you guys are up to? Uh, well, it's a pretty hard question to answer, but uh, I know for sure uh, we always focus on the quality of the dragons. Yeah. We make sure to keep them healthy, and that's actually the most important thing uh, to do for us. And what lines are you working on? We are currently working on the Red Monster lines, and uh, that's the main thing we focus on right now. And we also try to uh, bring in some cheaper dragons for uh, the rest of the public so we can offer everyone a healthy dragon. What is the future for Olympic Dragons? Uh, well, uh, mainly working together with other breeders, uh, like you for example. Uh, we're just awesome. trying to uh, create a friendly atmosphere in, the, in this world. Exactly. And we're currently not really looking to make our own line, but we just want uh, to keep breeding and we'll see where it goes. It's, exactly, uh, that's, uh, that's awesome. Yeah. We need more people like that to unify the passion together and create love and unity with all these dragons and yeah. reptiles that we create together as one instead of trying to separate each other mm -hmm. and we want to bring back where breeders can get along together yeah totally agree with that yeah, thank you for having us yes, no problem <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my name is Derek. What is your name? Winnie. All right. Um, tell me what inspired you about ball pythons. Uh, I do this over 30 years, and for me, inspired that the first time uh, the shop owner tell me that ball pythons are not possible to breed, and that's. That's the point, the, when, then I start. How did you know that ball pythons was something that you wanted to do? What made you do this as a profession? The coloration and the possibilities of the genes. And uh, when I see the, when I breed the first ball pythons and I see the result and, and now from year to year, it's, um, it's gorgeous to see the, the results of the, of the colors and, and uh, and mixes. What motor direction are you going with ball pythons moving forward? What, what are you working on specifically? Um, I love with a lot of genes, but um, what I really like is, uh, is all, all what bring red in and ball pythons. Uh, the red stripe, the red head, the mandarin, uh, the sunset. and So that is, that is the last six years uh, I work on these. And I work also desert DG stuff, uh, puzzle stuff, yes, a lot. What is your plan for the Mandarin project? I do a lot of, uh, now, this year, this year, uh, we clear the, we clear completely the, the Mandarin chain and, uh, um, and in the future for me, it's, it's, it's a really important uh, chain. All right, thank you for your interview. I appreciate it and it was nice meeting you. Okay, thank you. What inspired you to name yourself Takatuka Pythons? 
we are searching for uh, for a name for the for our hobby breeding, and um, we are thinking and thinking about it, and um, we want something unique. And um, yeah, our da daughter came by, and she's a big Pippi Langstocking fan, and there's the Takatuka land. And we said, hey, Takatuka is cool because Takatuka could be could be Africa, yeah. And, and from Africa, ball pythons come, yeah. And so we said, hey, Takatuka pythons is, is perfect. It's unique, and if you think a little bit with fantasy, you can say Takatuka land is Africa, and so we got it. So it's based on a tropic, a tropic environment, right. is what you bring in, like an Amazon feel. What inspired you to begin with ball pythons? Uh, we were searching for, for a pet, but I, I don't want a dog and I don't want uh, a cat. So we, we thought about, uh, will, will it be a beard dragon? Because I had a beard dragon and then... Um, it wasn't he, for you? He, he passed by. Oh, uh, he passed away? He, yeah, he passed by and so we thought, huh, what, what kind of um, animal could it be? What kind of pet? And she always wanted a... Hello. A snake. <laughs> she always wanted a snake, so we searched for snakes, and we came to the corn snake, and they are too um, too fast, too, too, too fast, and yeah. they're not yet. Yeah. yeah, they move around a lot. Yeah, sometimes it, it, they could be that way. It's a lot of work to try to handle them, but they can be handled. Pretty much, you're a heart with ball pythons, and what morphs are you bringing up forward? We're trying to hit the uh, uh, Pompe, <laughs> definitely. Uh, we working with Hypo, Hypo Clown combos, trying to get the Hypo Clown Desert Ghost. And what about what about the new gene that you were telling me about that I love? The T virus. Uh, we got uh, we got an upborn, and um, we, we paired her with the GHI, and one animal, two animals were unexpected. Yeah, they came out and they couldn't be there from from the pairing. So um, we we thought, okay, let's let's test, let let's look what what's in there. And we are in the process of trying. We're in the second year now, and uh, we're hoping this year for new results to see if there's a super form or how does it works. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you're pretty much trying to find out if it does a lot more what you're expecting, like if it's a super form or if it's a dominant. Right. That's awesome. I, I can't wait to see any, like a lot more four projects with that because that's an interesting name. The T-Virus, you know, that comes from Resident Evil. Right, right, it's right, just, right, right. It's, it's an awesome project and I'm looking forward to it and it was nice meeting you both. Thank you for having me. So single form riptide. Yeah? I love what it does on the sides so. though. Hence, hence the word riptide. Yeah, yeah, it's it, a white it, foam it goes from the for sea. It. It, it, it gets, yeah. it, it, the it name calls for it. It's yeah. a perfect name for it. Because that's what it looks like. Splashes on the side. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. You know that? that. Awesome. That's awesome. Wow, that's amazing. Look at those sides. It's amazing. The head, the head, the, head, the pattern on the head is crazy. Put it over here more. 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so the light side, dark side. Wow. Also the sides. <laughs> That's amazing. Of all the possibilities you can create as all the mutations for the hog noses. I want to pick your brain. I want to know where you're trying to go. You have a lot of uh, choice with, with the hog nose snakes in, in genetics. You have normals, you have albinos, you have toffees, you have exantic. And if you uh, mix some nice uh, DNAs like uh, exantic with the toffee, you can make some toxics. If you mix uh, a normal or the conda, then you have some condas, 50%. If you mix conda with conda, then you can have so also the nice super ones, like you can see, maybe you can see, like a super, this one. They have no uh, pattern, no spots, yeah. Okay. And what are you moving forward with? Uh, I hope to create in a day and, and a nice own color. Your own color of your own, own polygenic color. Maybe a better color than somebody else. Okay, that's awesome. And how long you've been doing this for? Uh, I do it now. I do it uh, reptiles. I do more than 20 years. Of noses now, uh, seven years. And what drawn you close to these animals? Like, what made you want to get into Agnos? I love that that snake, and it's a passion. It's a passion. It's a passion. And what made you like say, I want to do this? They are. Uh, if you see that snake, they are. They are. Uh, different not than other snakes they are day active so if you go uh, in the day to your snake room there is always some movements and, and activity is it true that they like to play dead yeah if they were born if they in the first three four uh, weeks if you touch them <laughs> they turn around yeah, i think that's a, a unique yeah. way that they do that it's hilarious but they play. after a, a month of two, it's, it's, it's over. Then they do normal. And for your future projects, if you don't mind sharing, yeah. what, am, what are you moving on forward with? Like, what is the one that you want to achieve? I want, uh, more and more the, the Arctic gene. The Arctic is a dominant gene. If you mix it with an uh, albino or a toxic or an uh, axantic, there are totally different uh, animals with a totally different uh, spots, other colors, like uh, a little bit washed out. Snakes. Awesome. And where people could find you? Uh, Facebook, Dreambox, www.dreambox.com, YouTube, and Instagram. Awesome. It was nice meeting you. Thank you, Derek. What is your name? Rene. And what do you do for a profession? You a ball python breeder, you a ball uh, bee breeder? Yes. All right. Uh, and what what did you like in the beginning? What inspired you to go further with this? Um, the morphs, the colors, the science and uh, this is my passion. And how long you've been doing this for? Uh, 15 years. And do you what do you expect to bring on the future with your genetics um, more color more genetics together and see okay is this good is this not so good for my eyes for my opinion this, uh, for the future not to uh, stay on the same point i must go oh, always forward you're trying to upgrade and see where you go forward what morph do you like working with best what interests you and catches your eyes? I have not uh, one more of the best. I, I work with square tails, with UPI bloods. Uh, the Aztec uh, is a very good uh, combination, uh, uh, a good key for, uh, for new projects. Um, I have five, six boas. Uh, this is my favorite. I have not one favorite.
What do you expect to bring what projects forward for the next years to come? We dive lots yeah. with the combos, with Motley, with Batstick, with Sanglo, and very selective with Gondolfo line. It's a special UPI line, it's not the Pink Panda line. Uh, the Phoenix, Boa, um, and uh, Roswell, Super Roswell. Uh, that's uh, the the project for the future and the square tails. The square tails are very uh, raw genetic. Square tail is uh, very a good booster for the color for the uh, for the moth. Awesome. What is an exciting project that you can't wait for? What excites you that you think that's going to inspire you in wanting to create something even crazier? Square tail projects with square tail. Where can they find you on the internet? Uh, on Facebook. Yeah, Rene Kroner or Boa Temple or Instagram Boa Temple, you can find me. Yeah. It was nice meeting you. Yes, it was nice meeting you too. You're welcome. Take care. Thank you. What is your name? Uh, Dennis, Dennis Wolfen from Designer Moths. Yeah. And how long have you been doing this for? In 17, my first Bot Titans. And what are you working with now that you want to so show? Now, I'm all of the albino stuff. I switched to Lavender. Okay. Most of my project, some nice Tinker project. Okay. Like uh, the Diablo stuff. You want to show the Diablo yeah. stuff yeah. to me? Wow. Here we have. A normal Diablo. Is this a new gene? Yes. It's a new what, gene. Is it a, is it a dominant or incomplete? Um, it's dominant at least. Is but it dominant? I, yes, but I didn't prove out if there's a super form. Okay. But maybe this season or next season. All right. Yeah. yeah. We will know if there's a super or not. Okay. So yeah. it's still a fairly new gene that you're trying to prove out. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Okay. So, so you're trying to collect data. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And so this, which is what is this? this is the same thing, but Angie same with Angie included. Okay. And this is additional with fire, and not additional. So the gene, the Diablo with fire. Okay. No All right, and I like the way it makes it more brighter. Yeah, yeah. The the fire does a lot of good work with that. We yeah, make it yeah. bright things. It's, it's really bright. Bright. The head pattern is really bright. Some people today ask me if it's, if it's a ghost combo, but no. Yeah, it, it sort of looks the desert ghost. Gene with a fire addition line. That's yeah. awesome. And uh, are you trying to put this onto recessive genes yes, also yes, in the yes, future? Yes, what yes, kind yes. of recessive genes are you trying to put that with? Um, these three <laughs> yeah. are already double head uh, Kiki, so oh. head genetic stripe and head uh, clown. Yeah. This is a male, and hopefully. Yeah, I. These are phenomenal. I get uh, the first clown maybe next year. Yeah. All right. And, and the third, first pites could come. Yeah. And what at the end of the season? And what, like, made you so interested in ball pythons? What made you so uh, drawn into them? Like, what is the thing that I, got into it? Like I, morphs? Yeah, morphs. Morphs is the main thing. I started as as a as a small child with stick insects and yeah. mantis, pesmids. So insects yeah. and switch to leopard geckos. Okay. And because of the same reason, the morph was incredible. It's but limitless. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I leave the the gecko, the leopard gecko game, and yeah. Ball python. Oh, so you switch up to ball pythons? Yeah. yeah. I don't Fine. blame you. And I will stay here. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. I like it really. It's yeah. nice to meet you. Yeah, and thank you. Thank you're you a passionate for your breeder. You can tell. Thank you can tell that you're really passionate with your animals thank and your shows. Much. And thank, thank you. you for having me.
It's so beautiful. Thank you. My name is Christopher Samel. Hashtag Crazy Balls. All right, thank you for having me. Thank you, me. Take care. Thank you. So uh, I started uh, back in 2004, so around 20 years ago. And at those times we only, yeah, there were just few mutations. So the albino, the pastel, I started with the spider. And so I was mainly, yes, interested in the, in the potential of the market. And so now we are here, we have a lot of patterns and colors. And, but I like patterns in general. So I think that I start for this reason. So I didn't start just for you know the money, the market, and the and the other things about the related to both Python. So you're very passionate about your animals. Yeah, yes. And I'm what direction are you going? Like, what is your main focus? Uh, you mean about mutation project? Exactly. Yeah, I'm in love uh, just from the beginning with the Ultramel. So I have a lot of Ultramel stuff, and I also like the Spark, a very underrated gene for me. There are a lot of good things to do. Yes, and I hope to show to the community some really nice stuff in the, in the future. What do you expect to move on forward with? Like what projects? Uh, now I entered the Monsoon project oh. with the Pied. I have some double heads growing and some Pied possible at Monsoon. And yeah. so I think that yeah, the Monsoon could be a really, really nice jeans. I saw some combos and we must choose the, the right combination because okay. some of them are not so nice in my opinion. But I think the most interesting gene at the moment is, uh, I mean, talking about the recessive gene is the monsoon. And like, if someone wants to contact you, what, how they can contact you? Uh, by Instagram, uh, Python.
my name is Jürgen and I'm from ProHerper. So I actually, I've been breeding ball pythons for a little over a decade now, um, mainly focusing on clown stuff, So, uh, but also the, the Lilic version, uh, anything cryptic, gizmo as well, uh, Amur as well. Uh, and I've also started a business where I'm now actually testing the genetics of ball pythons. So That's awesome. if you want to prove something out, so for example you have a possible head fight, you can send in the shed and we can test that for you. So genetic testing I've been doing now for um, roughly one year now, so it's quite fresh I would say. Uh, ball pythons, yeah, I've been keeping them for I think 15 years, breeding them for I think this is my 12th year now. What kind of social media platforms people can find you? Uh, anything basically, uh, Instagram, YouTube, um, also TikTok, uh, Facebook, website, so yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. How long you've been doing this for? Um, I get, I got my first snake in 2011, and uh, I start breeding after um, 2015, so a couple of years now. Oh, nice! Yeah. And do you enjoy doing this? Yes, I really like it, and I always want to do it as a hobby, not for a living or to, to make money. Uh, and that's because uh, I think it's uh, better for the animals to have it as a hobby because it's, uh, the quality is uh, Exactly. Yeah. For a new breeder that's working in this kind of direction, what kind of advice you can give to them to move on forward? Think what you want to breed. Uh, because um, there are, are a lot of animals and um, if you are one of the, the many who already have the same on every table, um, yeah, that's, that's... You're pretty much saying breed different. Yeah, breed different. Do something what you love. Yes. It was nice meeting you. Thank you to have this interview with me. It was a pleasure. Yes. Take care. I want to see a lot of really cool reptiles that you just can't see in the United States. And, or Canada. And has anything here like inspired you to do anything with your reptiles? Uh, yeah, I mean every time I come to a place like this and see how other people from around the world are doing it, yeah, you always learn something new. What was your first spark that you knew that you loved reptiles? When I caught a garter snake when I was nine years old. And that's when you knew that... I held that garter snake in my hand and I was like, I will love these for the rest of my life. And so far, have you found something that you want to bring from here to the United States? Always. There are some ball python morphs that we don't have yet in the United States. There are some snakes here that we don't have in the United States. And it's just a matter of time before they get over there. But yeah, there's a lot of stuff around here that's making me jealous. And what projects you're trying to move on for with, with yourself I'm on ball always, python aspects? Always into the pies. Always pies? Yep, and I think that uh, pied clowns are going to be probably like the biggest gene, or the biggest gene combo, as it were, uh, in ball pythons. So I'm focusing a lot on pied clown stuff. And are we going to see more to teach about ball pythons from Dave Kaufman? No, I don't do educational videos. I don't know what you're talking about. You went to Africa. <laughs> that was an awesome video, by oh, the way. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, 
What I love to do with my channel is educate and entertain. If you can make people who may have a fear of snakes, if you can make them laugh, that fear kind of goes away. So, what about um, if someone is trying to come in to the reptile industry? What kind of advice you can give someone that's trying to start up? Start small. Yeah. Start within your means. Don't go and get a loan for fifty thousand euros and 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 buy a bunch of animals. Don't do that. Start with three, four snakes and build. So pretty much like build up, build yourself up, and like your branding, yep. and have, gain people's trust in the yep. aspect of what you create, like being passionate exactly about right. their animals and what they do and how exactly they love them. Right. Yep. Learn everything that you can before you get your snake, and then get your snake and start small and grow and build your your facility. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you for your advice. I no appreciate worries. this. It was an awesome Good and a pleasure. You. Good Thank you. you. And I will get over to you and uh, film you for my channel. That was all the interview. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was something, a great experience that I will never forget. Thank you for everyone that took photos with me and wanted to take photos with me and just sharing each other's passion. It was motivational. I hope it was inspirational for all of you that's watching to keep spreading the love, unifying the passion. It's very important. If you guys start to share stuff, put hashtag unifying the passion because that is the most important that's what we need to get back to to enjoy everybody's presence and have fun and enjoy each other's crafts and passion and share everything that we do with these animals there's nothing wrong with that and i just want to thank iris reptiles for this amazing cup just look at that that is amazing that cup is amazing. It was a crazy experience. It was just thriving. And I just hope this show keeps on going. And thank you for John and Shane to make this amazing show. Shout out to you guys. You guys are awesome. And again, thank you for watching. This is Derek from Boss Dragons. And I hope to see you on the next one.